Well, good morning again, and again, thank you so much for coming out to church today. Really appreciate it. I want to welcome everybody who's in Isanti today. Hey, thank you so much for coming out to church here in Isanti. And if you're watching us online, welcome. We are in our second week of this, this whole series of final words. And I, I think, you know, as we're, we're thinking about these, these final words, I think about the like, most important things that somebody could ever leave for you would be if they were dying, all their life experience and everything they found is valuable in their life, that they would want to leave it with you, something that you would never, ever forget. And what we're looking at is the second letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy. Timothy was his, he called him his son in the faith because Timothy was just a young man, uh, 16, 17 years old, when he came to faith in Christ through the Apostle Paul. And then Timothy followed him and became a missionary with him and really became the Apostle Paul's right-hand man. And when Paul was in prison for the last time, he was in a dungeon in Rome. And he knew that he was going to be martyred under the, the reign of, of, of Nero, uh, the emperor of Rome. And <clears throat> as he knew he, that his time was short, he was not going to be released, and that he would be killed. He wrote this final letter to Timothy. In this letter is really the most important things that, he's, that Paul is saying, hey, Timothy, you're, you're going to carry the torch here. You're my right-hand man. You're the one I've sent you out to to the churches we've started, and, you know, you're, you're the one, and listen, I, I, I would love to see you again, but we don't know if that ever happened, but he wrote him this letter to say, keep these things in mind. Don't ever forget this stuff. I will not be able to remind you again. We will not talk. I won't be here anymore, but I don't want you to forget these things. These are so powerful. These are foundational. These are things that you will need to continue your life, to continue generation after generation. You will need these things. These are, these are very important. It's even as, as I read the, the second letter of Paul to Timothy, I read it that way every time. Like These are the very last words the Apostle Paul ever wrote. These are the last things that he ever said. In all of the things he did in life, these are the very end. And today I want to look at something that he wrote in there to Timothy that I think is, is so beneficial and so powerful. He says this. He says, don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments. Wow. Because you know that they produce quarrels. I mean, it's so simple, but yet so profound. That as your life goes on and everything that you will experience and all of the work and all the different opinions and all the different people you will work with and all the different situations, just remember this. Don't ever forget this. That don't have anything to do. Just don't get involved. Don't let yourself go there. Don't, don't connect with people. Don't get involved. I love the word stupid. Now I get to say it because it's in the Bible. Okay? Foolish and stupid arguments, things that do not matter, that they're not that important. Don't waste your time on this stuff. And then he also tells Timothy to remind everybody else of that. In another verse, he says this. He says, keep reminding God's people of these things. Warn them before God against quarreling about words. Why? It is of no value and only ruins those who listen. I mean, this is like, this is crucial stuff. That as, as Paul is there in the dungeon, these final words as he, as he puts his mind and contemplates these things, says, Timothy, don't do this. Don't ever get involved in this. And warn the people, don't let your lives get involved in these quarreling over words, in these stupid arguments, in these meaningless things. Don't do it. Don't get involved in it. Don't let yourself build mountains out of molehills. Don't let yourself focus on minor things. Don't waste your time. There's too many other things. There's too much important stuff in life. Don't let yourself do it. Don't go down there and just don't, don't do it. And you think, man, that, that's, a huge, that's a huge warning. It doesn't even sound that spiritual, does it? It doesn't even sound like, wow, man, this is unlocking the mysteries of heaven. It doesn't sound like that, but it is so crucial. And you wonder, why would he be that direct? 
Why would Paul say that for himself, for Timothy not to do it and to tell all the people he runs in, all the people he will pastor, warned them not to do it? That's so serious. Why? It's because of this. It's because of this. Because nothing good comes out of it. It only divides and distracts. There is no good thing that can come out of quarreling over words, over these little things that don't matter, over these stupid controversies. He says, hey, don't do it because no good comes out of it. Think about it. Not one good thing ever comes out of it. It doesn't ever produce. It only divides. It only distracts. There's nothing good comes out of it. It always will divide and distract our lives. Think about it. This isn't like, this isn't news we've never heard before. But we need to be reminded. Every one of us have experienced this. We have. Where, where when we focus on things that, that don't really matter, when, you know, when, when, we, when we lose track of the main thing, we get all involved in these little minor things, and it just, just, it just divides people. In your own home. You know, and if you're a husband and wife raising kids, you have been divided over things in the house that, you know, just don't really matter. And sometimes we lose the fact of, well, what's really important here? We lose that because we're focusing on such minimal things. Like even like raising kids sometimes, you know, mom and dad can, can be so distracted on little things about raising the kids do this way that we forget the whole things about the kids good. You know, we kind of forget that. You know, like who's right and who's wrong? And we lose track of that. How many of you have been at a restaurant? And maybe this is you. I hope not. But maybe you know somebody. You've been at a restaurant. And, you know, so I, was at, I was at breakfast with <clears throat> some people. This guy ordered his eggs. <clears throat> excuse me. And he wanted them, like, really, really runny. Like, not even sunny, whatever. Just really runny, runny. Like, you could eat them with a straw. Okay, that's gross. You're, you're eating with other people. But anyway... Uh, this whole experience and stuff, and you know, his eggs weren't exactly perfect, and, I, and I, maybe this is you, and I know you're paying money for it, it should be the way you want it, but I mean, it wasn't exactly perfect. He didn't enjoy any of it. And I, I think, like, that, that's so much of an example of sometimes in our lives, that when you and I allow ourselves to get, you know, involved in just these minor things and these stupid controversies, things don't matter, we, we lose track of the big picture, and it, and it can divide us. I know, how, how many of you have been on a vacation? You've been on a vacation and you're going to spend $4,000 on a vacation. But one thing isn't right. Oh, maybe the hotel door room squeaks. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up. But you know, what? It, and you know, the whole $4,000 can be wasted. Like you, you won't enjoy anything on the vacation because one little thing's bothering you so much. Or maybe you just, you arrive five minutes late, so it ruins the day. It just ruins the whole day. Really? Like, you see, when we, when we think about these little things, it distracts us from the main thing, what we're there for. I, I've shared this before, but I experience it often. I go to the Mayo Clinic a lot. And when I'm there, I'm, it just blows my mind. When I'm sitting in the waiting room almost every time, somebody will be urinating and complaining and moaning Think about that one. <laughs> about the tiniest things. We are in the Mayo Clinic being seen by the world's greatest doctors and surgeons. And they're complaining about they had to wait 10 minutes or something. Like, really? Really? They, when we get involved in, in worrying about and these little controversies, these things that don't matter much, it, 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 not only it divides friendships, it divides things, but it distracts us from what's really happening in life. You and I can miss out on some of the greatest things in life because we are so focused on a nitpick little thing that we, we forget, we miss the whole point. We miss, and some people go through life missing life. Missing life, because you know what? Everything's never perfect, and something's not right. And so I'm, I don't enjoy today because this wasn't right or that wasn't right. And really, Paul warns us, have nothing to do with that stupid stuff. Just don't get involved in it, and, and don't do it. it. It can be so distracting. And, and you know what? I was, matter of fact, just this week, on Friday, I was visiting this lady who's dying. She has... 
The doctors say two months to live, and it's probably less than that. And, and I'm visiting with her and, um, you know, asking really serious life questions. You know, like, you know, do you have any regrets in life that you'd like to take care of? And, you know, do you know God's forgiven you for all that stuff? And uh, I, I asked her, you know, if, um, you know, if there was one thing, one thing you could tell your kids and your grandkids, like, what would it be out of everything in life, everywhere you've been, everything you've done, and now you're looking at the end of life, what would be your final words to your family? And without even thinking about it, she said this, just, just so a matter of fact, that they love each other. That, I, my, my, that they love each other. And I'm thinking, how many families are destroyed? How many families, this person's not talking to that person. And, then, and, and missing the huge value of relationships and family because, oh yeah, somebody didn't sell a car that they thought they should have. Or some, I mean, this is a little, there, there are more family divisions and splits over like money, you know, and dividing up a, a, um, inheritance. And like, Really? You're going to trade a relationship of your family for something as piddly as money. And we lose track and we suffer because of it. And he says, hey, listen, don't get involved in these stupid arguments and quarrels about things that just don't matter. And he's talking about life. But how much more important is this for church? For church. And I don't mean the building or the walls. I mean for Christian people, for you and I? How, how much more important would this be for you and I that we don't get divided and that we don't get distracted from like the main thing of what God is all about and what Christianity is all about and the value that we have together and unified. As a matter of fact, there are many people, and maybe you're here today, maybe, maybe you're trying out church today, and one of the reasons that you haven't been to church, one of the reasons you left church when you were younger is because all the div divisiveness and division in church, and these people don't get along with those people, and these people don't like that, and there's so many denominations, all this stuff, that, that maybe, maybe it's even been one of the things you said, I don't, even, I don't even want anything to do with Christianity, because this is all I see. I see just people dividing and people getting distracted, like, what is this church thing all about? And, and Paul says, listen, to, to Timothy, the, the pastor is going to take over. He says, don't get involved in this stuff. It only ruins the hearers. It only divides and it destroys and it distracts. Not one good thing comes out of these little nitpicky little things that people get all their undies in a bundle over. Just don't do it. He said, don't get involved in it. Don't even ask and don't even care. Does it have anything to do with the mission? I don't care about it if it doesn't have to do with the mission. Stay focused. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul said this. He said in his own ministry, he said, For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. See, the Apostle Paul led by example. He said, listen, when it comes to church, when it comes to church, the, the Christians coming together, being a body, being unified for a common purpose, said, hey, when I came to you, I didn't get involved in all of that stuff. All I was concerned about is Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection. That's Christianity, and that's what I spent my focus on, and that's what I talked about. He, Paul even said this, I didn't even baptize people. He said, whoa, baptism's a big thing, isn't it? Not the biggest the Apostle Paul himself said, hey, I didn't even baptize people. Oh, yeah, I might have baptized a couple here and there, but hey, you know what? That's not the most important thing in Christianity. The most important thing in Christianity, the mission of Christianity, is to proclaim the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's about Jesus Christ opening the door to God in our lives. And Paul wouldn't even get involved in some of that stuff at all. He, he, he just wasn't going to waste his time losing focus on what this thing is all about. Now, I, I think about like the church and you and I being unified and us being together for a, a mission and a purpose. He kind of broke it down into three areas. And these are, these are the three in which we need to think about all the topics that we, that we have. There are things that you should be willing to die for. There are things 
that we should defend. And there are things that we just should simply discuss. We should not let these things divide us from the mission. That this is, in Christianity, and this, for my life even, myself, that there are, there are things in Christianity, there are things in the Bible that I would die for. I would not deny it, that this is the truth, and if somebody held a gun to my head, I would say, I, I would take a bullet for this truth. And there are other things that I would say, hey, I'll defend this. This is a scriptural principle that I will defend, but push comes a shove. No, I'm not dying for it. And there's so many other things we just discussed. Things we would die for, example. I would die for the Bible being the inspired word of God. Because I believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God. There's no uh, error in it except in translation there could be. But it is the spoken word of God that the Holy Spirit had inspired people to write. I believe every word of it is the inspired word of God. I'd be willing to die for that. What would you be willing to die for? I would die for this, the Trinity. I do believe that our God is in three persons, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I believe that. I would die for that. I believe that the fall of man, that I, I really believe and would die. As a matter of fact, I, I just know that all mankind has sinned and fallen short of God's glory. I know that every single human being needs to be rescued from the results of their own sin. Every human being, not one person is good enough to be in the presence of God. Not one person can earn the right to be, hey, I don't, I'm going to go to heaven because I'm good enough. And I just don't believe that. I believe in the fall of mankind and the failure of every single human being. And salvation is through Jesus Christ alone. There is no other way to be saved. There is no other way to God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. I would be willing to die for that. And I know even though we live in a culture of coexist, I know that we live in a, an influence that says every religion leads us to God. I would die for the fact that Jesus is the only way to God. He is the only way. I believe this is Christianity. This is the basis of Christianity. This is the source. And I, I think that all Christians need to be willing to die for these things. We are not going to change them. They never will change. This, my friends, is what we're unified about. This is why we come together. Not because we all dress the same. Not because we all drive the same Harley Davidson, okay? God bless you. Uh, <laughs> it's because of this. This is why we meet together. This is what this is all about. Now, there are other things that I would be willing to defend scripturally that I believe they're scriptural. For example, I believe and would, would do this, uh, the rapture. I have beliefs about the rapture that I would defend. The, rapture, the taking up of the saints when the trumpet blows, you know, and I, I believe that. Uh, end time prophecies, end times prophecies, you know, that, uh, you know, those things are arguable. Those things people can defend, you know, their view of what the end time prophecy is all about. Um, I, I believe in uh, the, the whole predestination thing. I don't necessarily believe in predestination, but the predestination argument is one that we should be able to argue, de to defend. Whatever your stance is on these things, you should be able to defend them. Uh, spiritual gifts. Wherever you are in spiritual gifts, you should be able to defend that and you know, know why you believe that and why you don't. Or if you don't have some of these things, what would, what would some of the things be to you as you are a Christian, as you're growing in your faith? What are some of these things? Baptism, communion, things like that. And here, here's the interesting thing. This stuff here may mean something to you and it may not mean something to you. But this stuff here should not divide or separate or distract from this. Are these important? They are important. Are they the most important? No, they are not the most important. And you and I can defend our position and still be in unity over these things. But then we drop down into this, things that we should just discuss and it shouldn't go any further than that. For example, and there's a lot of these, our traditions. I can't imagine somebody wanting to die over their traditions. 
you know, of what church is or what, you know, I just like we stand, we kneel, we do this, you know, or, or there's a pipe organ there or whatever, you know, or traditions. Like really, traditions might be important to you, but they certainly aren't scripturally or biblically important enough to divide over the mission over. Or how about dress code? And I know, I know some of these things are preferences. As a matter of fact, most of these things are our preferences that we can discuss and we can share with somebody. But drop it after that. You don't argue over this stupid stuff. You know, and, and certainly don't let this cause division in the work of God and what we're doing. And, and some of these things, a style of service. I mean, what's a church service supposed to look like anyway, you know? Uh, some people say, oh, that, church, that service isn't religious enough. That service is too religious. You got your opinion, that's it. Keep it at that. It's your opinion. Uh, the church name, <laughs> I threw that in there just because some people value the name of the church over the mission. For example, <laughs> we used to be called Abundant Life Church. We changed it to Access Church. And most of you bit the bullet and you went through it. God bless you. <laughs> Others couldn't handle it. It was a stupid controversy that caused division and people got distracted from the mission because some people left the church because we changed the name. That's a stupid can I make that more clear? <laughs> the decor, the colors, the music, all this stuff. Listen, here, here's the thing, and this is so important for our lives. This is so valuable for you and I. That Paul says, don't, don't get involved. Don't, don't even get yourself into these arguments and these things over words or names or styles. Don't, don't do that. Why? No good comes from it. Nothing good or positive will ever come. There will never be growth. There will only be minus. There will only be uh, destruction. Nothing good. Because these things always, always divide us and distract us from the mission of what this is all about. Today in our world, we have 40,000 Christian denominations. 40,000 of them. And you know what? For, there, there are 40 topics in this category that divide us. 40,000 different denominations over this stuff. Over the, only 40 divisions in this stuff. And you know what? Out of all 40,000, everybody agrees on this. Then why don't we keep this the main thing? This is the mission. This is what we're all about. And we need to stay focused on the mission and not get involved in stupid arguments or things that only divide and distract us from the mission and what we're supposed to be. As a matter of fact, so much so, the Apostle Paul says something that I admire every time I read this. I think it's amazing how clear he was about the mission, that he will not get distracted or anything else. He's not going to get involved in that. As a matter of fact, he don't care how you're doing it. The Apostle Paul doesn't matter. He doesn't care how you're doing church as long as you're keeping the focus on the main thing. And listen to what he says. He says, sorry, it is true. There's people... He's in prison. Some people are preaching about Christ not in a good way. He says, it is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. I love this. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. Do you understand what he's saying here? Listen, I don't care how you do church. I don't even care. Some people aren't even doing it right. And as a matter of fact, they're doing it just to make trouble for me. But I don't care because the main thing is still happening. And that's what this is all about. It is all about sharing Jesus Christ with people so they can have a relationship with God. And that's what church is about. That's what our focus is about. He says, I don't even care how they do it. I don't care. As long as they're not getting distracted from the mission. So let's not argue about all of that other stuff. And let's just not go there. I think for our lives, it, when, when you and I have an opportunity, and it could be at work, it could be here at church, it could be in a ministry, it could like, oh, remember this. If it's something that's not the main thing, don't let it become the main thing. And, and, and this particular church, Access Church, 
I am so proud of. I, I, just, I love being a part of this place. I do. Because on Easter, and I shared this before, on Easter we had 1,000 people. 1,000 people came here. 114 people said yes to Jesus Christ for the first time in their life. That is so awesome. That is so amazing. The average statistic in the United States is one person per church per year. We had 114 in one day. And do you know why that happened? Because you that are still here, you understand keeping the main thing the main thing. Because if you didn't keep the main thing the main thing, and you chose to get involved in stupid arguments and dumb things, there wouldn't have been a church here to have a thousand people come to. That this, there wouldn't have been a service here if you and I chose to divide over every stupid little thing. But you didn't. You have taken what the Apostle Paul said very seriously. Don't get involved in stupid arguments. Don't get in quarrels over words and meaningless things. Don't build a, a mountain out of a molehill. You keep focus and keep the main thing, the main thing. And you have done that. And I wonder about this. I mean, seriously, for each one of us, what would happen? And I'm talking big picture. What would happen if every Christian person that you know, every Christian person in just the United States, what if every one of us took these final words of the Apostle Paul to heart and said, I will never get involved in that. I will never go down that road. I am not going to talk about the color of this, the type of music, the who does, I'm, not, I'm not going down that road. I am going to connect to a body of believers who keep the mission the mission, and I'm going to get involved in that. What if every Christian in America decided to do that? And I'm going to take my preferences and keep them to myself. Can you imagine where Christianity would be today? As a matter of fact, there's some of you who, like I said earlier, you're even shady with the whole Christian thing. Should I get involved? I don't want to get involved in a church because I know church is just full of that, 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 and I don't want to. Listen, what if that wasn't like that? What if as a church we kept the main thing, the main thing, and it's all about drawing people into a growing relationship with God through Jesus Christ, and we didn't argue about other stuff that doesn't matter. We can defend things. We can discuss stuff. But we are not going to get involved in arguing over these things or quarreling over these things. Imagine where America would be today. And I, I'm, I am so serious about this. We think there's so many problems in our culture. The problem is the church of Jesus Christ is not impacting our world the way it should. And why? There's many reasons. But this is one of them. This is a big reason. Is because we choose so often to get involved in stupid stuff that doesn't matter. And it only weakens the church. It weakens our effectiveness. It divides us. Imagine if we said, I am going to follow this advice the rest of my life. I am not going to go there. I'm not going to talk. If somebody wants to talk to me about that, talk to the wall. Same thing as talking to me. Here, turn around. Just talk to the wall, okay? You give them your concern. Because I don't care. What if? Jesus said this is the key to, to changing our world. This is the key. As a matter of fact, and we've read this before many times, but it's just so so valuable that Jesus is praying for us today, the church today, right now. He says, I have given them the glory that you have given me. Why? God's given us his glory. Why? That you and I, that they may be one as we are one. I and them and you and me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Why is this unity thing so important? Because then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. This whole not getting involved in stupid things because it only divides and distracts. No good thing comes out of it. Jesus said, the world will know 
that I am the Christ, the Son of God, the Savior, if the church, if the Christian people could stay unified and keep the main thing the main thing. If all Christians, and you and I are part of that, we make our own commitment, if we all could stay unified, we will change this world for Jesus Christ, which will change your life. It will change everything around us. So I'm going to close with this. Are there things that you need to back out of? Have you been involved in, I love saying the word, stupid arguments and controversies over just dumb stuff? If you have, it's causing damage. Stop it. If you haven't, praise God. But let's all make a decision to build the church, build one another, and not get involved in these types of things. With that, I want to turn it over to Shaheen to go ahead and close the service in Isanti. And I want to pray for us, each one of us. If you could bow your head. Father, there's one thing I know for sure. We've all done it. We have all had our pet peeve. We've all been ticked off about something that didn't really matter. Well, it mattered to us, but it didn't matter to the mission. I myself have, and Father, I pray for forgiveness. I pray for healing. But Father, I take very serious these final words of Paul, urging, saying, even in the sight of God, command the people not to get involved in quarrels over words and stuff. Don't do it. It only destroys and it only distracts. It only divides. Father, none of us here want to do that. We all want to build. We want unity. We all do, every one of us. I pray that you would help each one of us. The next time we're tempted with a tidbit, the next time that, you know, something is kind of like our deal, that we, I just pray that you would remind us May the Holy Spirit remind us this does not build. This does not promote unity. This does not focus on the mission. So maybe we should let it go. Help each one of us to do that, Father, so that your kingdom would grow. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.